Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for our Get Ready for Planting Season webinar. Planting season will be here before we know it. Some folks are already rolling in the fields. I know everyone is getting anxious. So let's make sure that you get started on the right foot with this webinar so you can collect your data in the correct manner and have a smooth planting season. We have a great agenda for you today. So go ahead to the next slide. I'm gonna cover some of the housekeeping pieces to start off with. We're gonna talk a little bit about some of the marketing programs that are going on, and then we'll go through the steps on getting ready to plant. And then we also have a live demo to show you exactly how to do those steps in the Field View Cab app. And then we will talk about some resources and get you on your merry way um, to planting smoothly. Today, we will be recording this webinar as we do with all of our other webinars, and you can find those recordings on our YouTube channel select playlists and find the webinar playlist and you can find all of the webinars that we've done throughout the course of the year. So if you need to go back and check anything, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, for a little bit of a, a recheck, then you can certainly do that with the FieldView YouTube channel. Next slide, yes, thank you. So today we have a couple of great uh, folks with us and we are going to present a lot of information we want to make sure that you have all of your questions answered. So if you have questions, please send them in to us via the chat or the Q&A. You should see the Q&A over on the right-hand side of your screen. If you don't, check the controls at the bottom of the screen to bring up either the chat or the question and answer box. Either way, I'll be keeping my eyes on those things and get your questions presented to our panelists um, as soon as I can. So let's get right to introduction. We have two uh, fabulous uh, ladies that are climate activation managers um, here in the U.S. that are going to walk through all of the steps that you need to take to make sure you have a smooth planting season. So we have Sarah Wood and Megan McNamee. And so to get started right away, I'm going to turn things over to Sarah so that she can um, get us going with the marketing program and get us into the the main show of our event today. So Sarah, take us away, please. Yes, good morning, everybody. Thank you for taking the time um, to join us and, and get ready for planting. So for 2022, the marketing programs we have uh, is FieldView Plus is just now $99 a year. But we have a couple options that you can get that at no cost to you. And the first option is through Bayer Plus Rewards. If you have an active Bayer Plus account, you can link that through the Bayer Plus website to your Climate Field View account. Just make sure you're using the same email and you'll immediately get one year um, added to your subscription at no cost. Uh, seed loyalty is the other one. If you purchase 100 units of Bayer brand seed in 2020, you will also get a year for free. So what are the support resources we have for climate? If you're following along on your iPad, or feel, please feel free to take notes or pictures of our screen. When you go to support.climate.com on the top of your browser, you will see this little box with the arrow at the top. Select that share box. And then this, a pop-up will show and you're on the bottom right, you wanna hit add to home screen. And then you can edit that title. So you can edit it to say Climate Corp, as you can see displayed, or you can um, add it to say support or help. And then once you click in that link into our Support Knowledge Center, it's like a Google for climate. So at the top, you have a search bar where you can search for keywords like John Deere or Case Planter. At the top, there'll be relevant videos to the season. And also, there's just the icon topics arranged by category. So planting, growing, harvest, weather, whatever you're needing at that time. And then at the bottom, there's suggested articles that are relevant to the season. So help on the farm. Currently, we have about 140 climate activation specialists that are boots on the ground, ready to come out to your farm, to your shed, to help set up your account whether it get boundaries into your field, installing field view drives and adapter harnesses, assistance on getting able to live stream from the cab or collecting data to do our data inbox. We also pre 
provide assistance in importing data for harvest, planting, application, and soil data. We can help writing scripts and exporting and importing into your monitor. We also provide assistance for all field view functionalities with field boundaries, data cleanup, yield analysis, and reports. So again, we have 140 people in the US on the ground ready to give you one-to-one -one climate support at your farm. You're, you can also email support at climate.com if you're having any issues or call the 800 number below. If you're sending an email, please make sure you have the attached information, your FieldView username or email, the field name you're needing help with, the CAB app or FieldView version that you're working with, your iOS, your iPad model, and the equipment you're working with. Put in a brief description of the issue you're having and then any troubleshooting steps you've already taken. So if you've already unplugged the drive or restarted your iPad, you can add that in there just so they're aware to help you. So getting ready for planting. First, it all comes down to compatibility. Please feel free to scan the QR code that's on the screen. But we wanna make sure you know your planner model, your rate control system, your implement canvas, your planner control display, and your GPS source. You can also find this compatibility guide at support.climate.com and search compatibility guide. What you'll find on our website is we have some uh, predefined PDFs already ready for planting and seeding, application, harvest compatibility, or field view drive adapter harness. And what's new this year is our new compatibility checker. So you can get a quick link to that by going to setupclimatefieldview.com and you just put in your equipment and it'll tell you what harness or if you need an adapter. The big thing as we're getting ready for spring and to start your planners in the field is checking for updates. We need to make sure that software and iOS software is up to date. So the latest CAB app version is 11.0.1. Make sure that's updated and your black app, your field view app needs to be on 6.22 for iOS and Android. For your iPad that you're running live, you need to make sure you're on the latest iOS version, which is 15.4. If your iPad cannot update past iOS 13 or beyond, you'll probably need to update your iPad at that time. Also make sure you're checking with your equipment dealers for in-cab display updates. Make sure your 2020, your Ag Leader, your Pro 700, your John Deere monitors, make sure if there's any new software that they help get that up to date so everything can run smoothly. Equipment measurements. You need to confirm your planner and tractor are set up with accurate measurements. If you wanna scan that QR code on here, we have an equipment measurement profile sheet that is also on our website. Accurate measurements help create accurate maps. And as we go through all these steps today, the big thing is if we set everything up accurately ahead of time, we can have good data in, which concludes in good data out. So one of my favorite features with the CAB app is adding hybrids. So when you're in your iPad in the white CAB app, go to settings, hybrids and add new hybrid. Begin typing the hybrid name as it appears on the bag tag. Make sure you're uh, selecting your rib blend if needed and then tap on that to add it. You can add multiple hybrids. You can add your whole portfolio, whether it's a Bayer brand or not. You can have your whole portfolio in this system and then just repeat the steps to add additional hybrids. You can also scan the bag tag. So at the top, you'll see a scan bag tag. Just hover over that tag. As you can see here in this viewfinder, it's hovering over the whole tag, not just the QR code. Uh, make sure you're capturing that whole tag and it'll read that and pull up your accurate hybrid if you're not comfortable typing them in because there are lots of different options. Another way that we can add hybrids is we can assign them to the field. So if you have your placement ready, you can just go into the CAB app, go from home to fields, and you'll see this pop up on your screen. So you can add a hybrid for that field. You can put multiple in if you're not sure, you know, depending if you get in early or late, which hybrid you'll place there. You can go ahead and add seed treatments and you can add applications. Also there, you can add your prescriptions to the field too and see all of those that you've built at climate.com. 
compatibility update, we have exciting news with Ag Leader. So back on February 9th, we launched CAB app 11.0.0, and that was public beta for Ag Leader. And with that, we validated the Ag Leader Planter Monitor Module, the PMM, the Ag Leader Seed Tube Monitor Module, the STMM, the Hydraulic Drive Gen 1, and the Electric Drive Gen 2. And we get a bonus layer with that one with the applied downforce. The Ag Leader Seed Command Hydraulic Drive 1 and Individual Road Downforce Gen 2 mixed together is not supported at this time. Uh, we will update you. You'll get an email when that update does come out. But for the most part, we are compatible now with Ag Leader. And so what this looks like is if you're running an in-command monitor, you need to make sure you get the following cables from Ag Express. So for in-command, you need the CC1016K. And if you're running an Integra, you need the CC1015K. Again, those come from Ag Express. Make sure when you're setting up that equipment that you are selecting the correct rate controller. Make sure you know if you have the Ag Leader rate controller or the Kinsey. So just take a peek at those before you set up your equipment so that way everything will work accurately. Your GPS source is going to configure in the back, so that's not a big deal. If you have any questions with this Ag Leader planting for running live in the cab this spring, please put those in the chat. If you don't have a compatible rate controller, but you still want to map your planting data because you are capturing harvest data, the Map Anything kit is for you. So the SKU for that is CC1112K. That comes from Ag Express. The field map boundary must be present. Match planner width at minimum. Have a solid GPS mount, and you'll just hit tap start to activate it and then hit not active when you're lifting up. Also, this can be used on four wheelers or UTVs to go back and map plots after they've been planted. So this is just a really nice option if you're looking to capture that data, but you don't have a compatible rate controller. You could also run this on a sprayer too to capture those as applied maps. Planting setup demo. So right here, you can see we have QR codes. If you're needing any of these, feel free to scan them right now uh, for field view drive compatibility, equipment profile and measurements sheet, create a master hybrid list, mapping seed treatments, and mapping with incompatible rate controllers. Field view support is here to help. So once again, I wanna say, please feel free to call our 800 number what I tell my guys is you can always call your cam or your cast, but if you're in the cab and you're in an SOS situation and you're about to, you know, throw all your monitors out of your cab, stuff just isn't going right, call our 800 number and we'll have a friendly voice on the line there to help you. We have all the resources at our finger fingertips as we're working that line and we can help you get, get back up and going. So at this time, I'm going to pass it over to Megan and we'll do some live demos in the app. Perfect. Thank you, Sarah. As I'm passing those controls, um, a couple things that um, I just want to make sure that we call out uh, as well, um, in specific to the Ag Express cables um, from, for Ag Leader uh, setups. Um, what is your advice on making sure that folks have those uh, cables in time for planting? And do you happen to know what the lead time is on those cables? Yes, so at this time, I, if you do not have the cables yet, I would advise you to call Ag Express. I don't believe you can order either of them off the website at this time. They both say call to order. Um, so we might be have a, a wait time of a week to two weeks. Now we had a, a bulk set of them um, in hand, but they have sold out. So make sure you get them called the day to get those ordered. Perfect, thank you. Um, yes, I I have heard also that those are pretty popular right now. So, um, you know, don't delay. Don't think you have time. Uh, get those ordered right away. Um, the next thing I wanted to touch on before we cover um, things with Megan is um, if folks do need that support help on farm, 
And what is the best way for them to go about getting a climate activation specialist on their farm? Yep, just reach out to your climate field view dealer and let them know that you'd like a climate activation specialist to come and help get set up and, and they should they should know who to reach out to. If you happen to have your CAM, your climate activation manager's number, you can also feel free to call them. Uh, and if you, none of those avenues work, you can always call support and let them know. Fabulous. Thank you so much. All right, Megan, we, um, we do see uh, your notes right now on the screen, um, but we will go ahead and let you get started in um, in the app and show us where we need to go to make things run smoothly this planting season. Great. Thank you, Mindy, and thank you, Sarah. Good morning, everyone. We are going to talk a little bit further about what Sarah presented in a live demo format. Got a list here, some, some heavy hitters that are uh, a good list to make sure, like we said, we love to do more clicks now. So A, you're not doing this stuff the day you hit the field if possible, or B, we can check some stuff early in advance to make sure that we're setting ourselves up for high quality data. And high quality data is important. I know there's a ton of stuff going on in the field. Trust me, every time I get a phone call and I hear six monitors beeping and everything else going on, I, I believe you. However, it is worth it to, to take a moment and make sure you do these things right because that's going to give you better reporting later on. So we're going to get into what those steps are. They're not overly complicated. There's just a few of them. And if you miss any of it, like Mindy said, this is recorded. So you'll have a chance to go through again and pause and do this at your own time. Okay, so the first things first. I get this question a lot. Megan, do I update? Do I update my iOS on my iPad? Do I update my cab app? I've heard different things. So here's your official uh, official verbiage for this spring. You are going to update. Always update your cab app. And you're going to get multiple versions throughout a season um, and continue to update. There are fixes and releases and lots of important stuff that come out in those versions. And we'll show you what you where you can see what's included. But you are also going to update your iOS. So the iOS is the operating system of the iPad itself. What you're looking at here is a lot. Um, that's actually my home screen of my iPad. Um, I have, everybody's different. Everybody's iPad is set up a little bit differently. So sometimes it's a little bit of a hide and go seek game, but I have in the upper right, a um, tile that I have labeled field view. And within that, I've moved over a lot of relevant resources. If you are a grower or if you are someone who is a field view dealer who is uh, hands-on and helping your growers, I recommend creating a field view specific folder on the home screen and just move all your apps and anything relevant there. So that way they know they're going to one spot every single time. I've actually moved over my settings and my app store just because I know that those are two places that I go very frequently when I'm going to field view. And we are gonna start in the settings of the iPad because what I wanna check is my iOS version. So again, I went to where I know I have my settings wheel. It's this little silver gear that says settings. And I tap that and that's gonna bring me to all of my settings. You've got two sides. I'm making them dance a little bit here. On the left side is where you have all of your options of your iPad settings. And what you want to do is you want to make sure you scroll down until you have general selected, which I already do. But general is going to bring up the general information about your iPad. If we're looking on the right hand side here, we can see about and software update. What we want to see is about. So I'm going to actually select that and it's going to dive me further into information about this iPad, about my iPad in my hands here. And here I can see the name of the iPad, the current iOS version this iPad is on, as well as my model number, which is actually, if you look at model number, so that is the fourth option down, you follow that all the way over to the right, It's um, it has a serial number, mine starts with MY, 3J, et cetera. If you tap that, it's gonna tell you um, the actual model number that you, then you can go check and see what type of iPad you have. We're not gonna dive completely into that today, but I do like to show you there's a secret button there. So I'm just tapping that back and forth. So again, above that, I have my software version. I am on iOS 15.4. 
I believe that is the latest version. I updated this like a day ago. They might have snuck a 15.4.1 in there, but I'm pretty sure this is the latest version. Now, these iOS updates are pretty hefty updates, okay? So you need to be on Wi-Fi. You need to have your iPad plugged into power. This is not something you do on the data plan of the iPad, and actually it won't let you. So typically it does need to download on the Wi-Fi, make sure it has enough power. It's a great thing to do in the morning, let it sit, in the evening, let it sit, but it's, um, it's not something you wanna do necessarily right out in the field or can do. A Couple other things down below. So scroll down with me with your eyes. You can see capacity, uh, capacity and availability or available storage. This iPad is a 128 gigabyte iPad. I've got almost 105 gigabytes available. I've got plenty of storage. Um, really, you if you at least have 10 gigabytes, you, you'll be fine for the season for the most part. If you're getting down to one gigabyte, two gigabytes, let's have a conversation with support and maybe see if um, you might need to step into a different version of your iPad. Okay, if you did need to update your iOS, right, like let's say you weren't on the latest version, I'm going to go back here, this software update tab right here, um, I have my automatic updates off, a lot of farmers probably do, you're okay to turn those off just as long as you remember to go in there, if you're like on version iOS 13, like you need to go in and get updated, and if they're not on auto updates, you might not have done it in a while, so go in and check, if you have one listed, it will be here, it will give you the instructions, really, like I said, Wi-Fi, plug it in, tap it, it'll take over from there. Okay, so how do you check to see what versions your cab app is on? There's a couple different ways you can do this. I'm going to show you what I think is the easiest way, and then we'll show you the other way. So if I am instructing a grower to check their cab app version, what I will have them do is go into the white and black app or the field view cab app. Okay, and now I'm on my home screen. I've got my six icons here, map, equipment, field, settings, help, and analysis. To check that uh, cab app version, we're gonna select help in the bottom middle. And then to the left side of the screen, I'm gonna make it dance here. If you go all the way down, you can see version info. And whatever the top number on this list here is, so version 11.0.1 is the version that your cab app is currently on. Not the latest version necessarily, what your app is on. And I believe this is also the latest version. Um, there should be, there's anticipated another update before spring. We we're supposed to get it towards the end of this month, might be a couple weeks or within the week. But you're probably gonna see um, a couple updates throughout the season, like I said. If I scroll down here, you can see version 11.0.1. Not a whole lot in there, just some miscellaneous bug fixes. Um, but uh, Cab, App, oops, Cab App version 11, it's got a lot of stuff in there. If you look towards the middle, like we've got some compatibility. We talked about the Ag Leader, so that's what's listed in here. Um, we've got some issues that were resolved. That's a pretty hefty update. And you will typically see this before season. So before planting, before harvest is where you will see larger updates. During mid-season, we don't put a lot of new features or new ads typically in the versions. We like to keep it to just maintenance, making sure the app is functioning. Um, and the last version before that, after harvest, was 10.5. And so you could see we had a big jump from 10 to 11. That's how you know there's a lot of juicy stuff in there, okay? So let's say that you were not on the latest version. You noticed you're still on 10.5 and you're like, oh, crap, Megan said I need to go update. How do I go do that? Well, we're actually going to, if you don't get a push notification, so if, when you go into the cab app, it doesn't automatically just give you a push to update because it will sometimes. You can go do it manually in the app store where you update the rest of your apps. It's no different from updating your Angry Birds or whatever else it might be, your TikTok app. It's the same spot. So you're going to go back into the home screen of your iPad. And again, everybody's iPad's different. But I'm going to go to the App Store here. It's this uh, blue icon with the easel. It looks like an A. All right. And it's going to ask me questions. And now I'm at the home screen of my App Store. At the bottom of the screen, so if you take your eyes all the way down to the bottom, you have a toolbar down there. And towards the bottom right corner, you're going to see Search. It's got a little magnifying glass. And I'm going to select that. And then I'm going to go to my search bar. 
And now I will say the uh, cab app is a little bit funny for searching. I type in climate. It might start to pop up because I've searched it before. But I type in climate field view all the way through and select that. Then it brings up both our apps. Yes, there are two apps. So we have the cab app. That's the in-app ver version or the in-cab version we'll be focused on today and the black app. If there is an update on the black app, go ahead and update it too. Always update. But I can see that it says open. So I'm looking right here. I'm looking at field view cab and I take my eyes to the right above the picture and I see open. That means it's not saying that there is another update. If there were and I was not on the latest version, that would say update. And we do stagger our updates. So let's say um, there was an update that was just sent out today and you're following along with me and you go in there and you're like, Megan, you said there's an update, but it says open for me. Well, that's because they're staggered and it might not have hit your iPad yet. So you can hover your finger over where it says, uh, so field view cab to the left and you see the icon. If you press your finger and hold, it's gonna bring up this pop-up. And if there truly was an update, that open would allow you to update it right there. I'm already updated, so I can't really demonstrate, but it's kind of like another secret button a little bit like the uh, model version in the, um, in the general settings of the about of the iPad. So that is your information for updating. What we also wanted to get into today is connecting the drive and some of the things that we need to shake off from maybe harvest or last planting season. And so connecting your drive is a functionality of Bluetooth. It is the same troubleshooting steps for the most part as it would be if you're trying to connect to your headset or to your Bluetooth speaker in your truck. I really want to um, emphasize to, to not overcomplicate. I know there's a lot of stuff going on and it can get very overwhelming. However, just remember your basics, right? It is basic Bluetooth. So make sure if you're in the cab, you're not sitting with um, six computers, 20 iPads, and I'm exaggerating, um, and a bunch of other Bluetooth floating around. Try to minimize the other Bluetooth while you're getting connected. So shut your phone Bluetooth off if you're having troubles. Maybe make sure you're not right by a radio. If you have Bluetooth in the cab, I actually just talked to a farmer yesterday and his, uh, his sons like to use the aux cord in the cab instead of the Bluetooth that's built into the tractor because they know sometimes it can interfere um, with their iPad or with their headset and a lot of other stuff going on. So minimize the Bluetooth. You can turn it on later once you get connected again and make sure you're ready to go. If you're connecting your drive fresh, like super fresh from straight out of the box, then you really shouldn't have too much going on as far as like other devices it's been connected to. But um, I'm going to actually go back to the home screen here and I have a drive setting. You can't see me, but you will, once you're sitting in the cab, you will be able to have your drive. So it's formerly known as the hockey puck. Don't let marketing know that I said it that way. It's the field view drive, but you will have the, the drive and then you will need to find your CAN diagnostics port. That can be in different spots, depending on the make and model of your equipment. So you might go on a little bit of a hunt. Um, if you can't find it, check underneath your cup holder and check a couple different spots back behind the seat to the right. Um, or you may have an adapter cable. As Sarah mentioned for our ag leader, there are cables involved in compatibility. So if you've purchased a Y cable, it could be connected to the back of your monitor and you will see the diagnostics port coming off of there in like a split cable. So that would be where you would plug your drive in. Um, so I'm gonna actually, the drive that I have here, I'm going to go back into my settings of my iPad, okay? And I'm pretending I'm in the cab. I've got my iPad, I wanna connect. I know where my CAN bus is. So I'm like coming into my, my, um, my general settings here. And instead of general, I wanna actually go to Bluetooth because that's what we're gonna connect. Once I'm there, I plug in my drive and it's gonna flash a few colors at you. First one's gonna be green and green actually means power for us. And then it should quickly change to a blue color. Um, now, if you've got a lot of light going on in the cab, sometimes it's hard to tell. It could look like a light purple, just depending on how much sun, but really as long as it's not red or green, then it's blue because there's no other color. So if it's red, call support. If it's green, it's power. If it's blue flashing, that means it's trying to connect to Bluetooth. 
it actually already auto connected here. So if you're looking at my screen, you can see I've got my AirPods connected. I have another demo drive and then I have sprayer demo drive. That's what I've named this. And to the right of it, it says connected. Now, again, don't be afraid to press buttons because some, sometimes stuff is hidden. So this is connected. We're already good here. Um, but this little I, if you tap that, that's where you can forget or disconnect. And I'm actually going to disconnect to show you. So I can manually disconnect. I can forget this device, which I'm going to do. This is a great troubleshooting step for your, again, for all of your Bluetooth, not just your field view drive. And I unplugged my drive and I'm just going to plug it back in to show you. So I'm plugging it back in. It flashed green on me. It's quickly flashing blue. That means it's trying to connect in my Bluetooth settings. And I get a pop up. Bluetooth pairing request, and I'm going to hit pair. Okay, boom, connected. But that is not it. There's one more step because we like to make things fun. Um, we're actually going to go over to the cab app now. So I am connected to Bluetooth to my actual iPad device, but I need to make sure I tell my cab app what drive I have going on. So back to the home screen, right? And then we're going to actually go to settings and devices. I got a lot of stuff going on in here. I have some simulation drives, et cetera. Your screen, unless you have a lot of drives, probably won't look like this. It might if you have quite a few on the farm. But I know that I want to connect to my sprayer demo drive. And it actually says tap to connect. Those other drives that you saw, my Bluetooth, Megan drive, Megan demo drive, those are out of range. They're not even plugged in. They're not here right now. So it's not registering. So I'm going to tap my sprayer demo drive. And it's going to say, is this your field view drive? Sure is. If it wasn't, I would hit no, but it is. So that's probably moved me up to the top here. And when I see that I've got a green check mark to the left of my drive, my drive in my hand, so my physical one that's plugged into the cab is now a solid blue color. I know that I am firmly connected via Bluetooth. And Bluetooth is good to go. If for some reason you're in the field and the Bluetooth drops, try those steps again. Um, and if you're still having issues, please call support. Okay. So now we are connected to the drive. And this is not a fresh connection. If that was a brand new drive, it would actually ask me to add equipment right then and there. But we're going to go back to the home screen. And I'm going to show you just quickly what that looks like. So again, this is your home base, your home screen. Instead of settings this time, in the upper middle, we're going to go to equipment. What you can see here is that I have a John Deere 1770 planter and a tractor. You need both the tractor and the implement behind it if that's what's going on in your season. So what I mean by that is during planting, right, we have the tractor and the planter. It's two pieces. During harvest, we have just a combine. So there's only one piece to connect. If you have a pull type sprayer, you have two pieces you need to connect, the tractor and what you're pulling behind you. If it's self-propelled, you got one, right? Pretty simple. We know that these are selected because they have the green check marks, right? Our drive has a green check mark. Our equipment has a green check mark. If you wanted to change the equipment, like maybe I wanted to flip over to this uh, 2021 corn planter, I could very easily do so by hitting set active. And it would ask me if I wanted to switch which I did. If I wanted to train, uh, change the tractor, we would do the same thing and I could just select a different tractor, okay? If I wanna add a new piece of equipment, let's say you're the lucky one and your planter came in in time and you got all of your stuff retrofitted on it, whatever you're doing. Did I, did I lose the screen? Uh, we did lose your screen, Megan. All right, one moment. Let me check my air server here. Technical difficulties. Um, this is Sarah. I have one thing I wanted to add. If you are running cables with your Ag Leader sprayers, check those. You might already have the cable you need for your planter. So I just wanted to add that in. That's a good call. Well, that's a great add, Sarah. Perfect. Good thought there. And really on that note, too, a, a great question to ask yourself in general is, have I changed anything on my equipment from last season? Like if this is not if this isn't a first time for you and you've just checked compatibility fresh, 
always just give it a double check. You can call support. You can reach out to your activation specialist. And that means really like if you've changed your um, GPS, your rate controller, what you're pulling behind there, switched out a monitor, whatever it could be, I'd rather you double check just to make sure you have everything versus hit the field. And then uh, we realize then that we need to order something else. Okay, so it is processing for me. I'm trying to get it pulled back up here. Yeah, Megan, Are there any other say, let's, questions? I, I was just going to call out, hey, folks, now's a great time to get more questions entered into that chat or the Q&A. If you have questions, um, no question is too silly because we are all learning and all getting started brushing off the cobwebs from last planting season. Um, I would also say that if you're going to do any kind of trials or plots, we do have that information on our knowledge center, on our best practices for handling plots. Um, think about what you're going to be experiencing during the planting season. Um, and, uh, you know, think about any of those questions that you might run into that we can head off right now and that way save you some time and headache uh, later on. So um, I will I will go ahead and let you continue, Megan, and I'll save some questions here um, when you are finished. Cool. Okay, back on my soapbox here about adding your equipment. Now, remember you gotta add both pieces. If you wanted to add something new, like I was saying, maybe you're the lucky one and your planter came in um, and you got a new John Deere planter and you're really excited about it, make sure you get it added in here, okay? You just wanna go through and select really whatever it is that you have um, that is relevant to your equipment. And I will say, there's some stuff that you can, you know, it's probably the same, this, that, or the other way, but do verify and double check and make sure that what you're adding is congruent with the actual equipment that you have. Um, so I'm selecting my frame style here. I'm gonna keep it simple with a single. Maybe it is a 12 row and we're gonna do 30 inch spacing it's drawn and you want to give it a name now if you have multiple pieces of equipment you can see behind this pop-up box i do like to label it quickly the brand the model and then if it's specific to corn or beans or maybe you have multiple operators and one person remains in the corn planter so you name it um john deere 17 70 Corn, John, I know it seems silly, but whatever you can do on your operation to keep things straight, um, you wanna try to do. And so you'll just go through and you'll select your planting display. So this is the monitor. So the OEM monitor that's controlling your equipment, that's probably reading your GPS as well. And your planting controller is not the monitor, it's the actual electronics on the planter physically controlling the rate at which your product is leaving. So um, it could be a John Deere 4HP, 3HP. Again, you do want to verify, or maybe you have something else. Um, but for this instance, we're going to use the John Deere Seed Star 4HP, which we are compatible with. Um, if you are doing an application, you can set that up here as well. But you also want to make sure that you double check your seed exits, your wheel distance, and any other measurements. Um, I recommend getting a tape measure out at least one time going out and following these measurements and getting them in here. For pretty standard equipment with John Deere, um, like in a planter or combine, the measurements that we have as defaults are pretty good. But let's double check, right? Let's just take the time now before we get to the field and realize that we had something different. And we have to do it then. Um, you will notice though, like, let's say that we didn't quite get our GPS or I'm sorry, our measurements correct. When you go to the field to map, you're going to notice consistent gaps in the map. It's not going to be like blips that are missing. You'll be able to see between the rows that there are gaps set up that are, um, that are insinuating that your equipment is not set up correctly. So you would just go in, double check and remeasure, and then add that equipment again. Okay, so that's adding your equipment. We know we've got our planter and our tractor set up. So we're actually gonna, we're gonna go to the field now. So we're gonna go back to our home screen. Again, I just hit that, the home button is what takes you here. And instead of going to settings or equipment or help, I'm gonna go to my map screen. And what you will see here is, 
probably wherever you're at. I don't have any GPS actually connected to me. It looks like I'm in some sort of mountainous area by default right now. Let me zoom out a little bit. Maybe it's not mountainous. We're just in Kansas. Um, but it's going to take you to the Google image in the background. Now, if you are in the cab and you're connected to GPS out of the shed, like you pulled the tractor out, it should take you to the exact location that you are. On this upper right corner button here, there's a little uh, planter icon. If you tap that, it would then take you to wherever you are as well. Like I said, I don't have GPS connected, so it's not really taking me anywhere. Now you would select your field. So say you pull up to um, mom's house. I'm going to pull up to uh, Brandenburg is this field here. And once I'm ready, I'm going to go ahead and make it active. I'm going to hit yes. And it's automatically because I am connected to the drive and I have my planter connected, it's going to know, hey, let's go ahead and get this set up with your hybrid or variety. So whatever crop you're doing, you're go ahead and select that. I'm going to leave it on corn. And then What's in white is what I have selected here. So this is the hybrids. If I wanted to go over to seed treatments, which you can record with the field you drive, I would toggle over to seed treatments, but we're gonna start on hybrids. And I'm going to tap to select the hybrids, or I'm sorry, this is the crop here. So we had, let's see. What you will notice is if you start typing by the brand, it's going to pull up anything that we have standardized for that brand. And this is important here. You do want to, as much as possible, use the standardized version of your hybrid or variety. If you go in and manually type lowercase, like I have D, uppercase, lowercase, et cetera, all kinds of spacing, versus the standardized version, it's going to recognize that as two separate hybrids and you want them to be together in your reporting so that everything is the same. So if you're looking at, again, I'm just picking one. If you're looking at um, this decal product, for those of you that sell this, this is probably something really old. Don't judge me. I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm just picking decal. Um, if you select that and then you went in and maybe did add new hybrid, um 20 what was that 2023 and i did a space and i did it like this and i added custom wait did it do it maybe it won't let me do custom here done hmm you can add that a custom like in that. a different well i was trying yeah. to add it Right, I was trying to add it custom so that you could see how it breaks it out. I'll show you guys in a different spot. Um, but if I did that other version, it would recognize these as two different hybrids, right? Even though they're the same. Now we have this uh, hybrid selected. You can add additional if you would like to, like if you'd add, like to add another one, you can definitely do that and have multiple on your planter. Um, but we're just gonna do the one. And let's say that uh, we're moving forward with our 2322. And we want to assign it to different rows okay so then we would just simply select this all right now it's currently assigned to all of our rows but we could go ahead and assign it to the left half or we could assign it to the right half or we could assign it to none of our rows and just do our end rows for some reason um, you can move that around and tell it wherever you want it to go just double check that your left and right are your actual left and right behind you when you're doing that Okay, so once everything looks good in here, again, you can add your seed treatments if you would like. Um, just this is what I have in here is by default. Um, they'll be listed there and then I wanna hit confirm. So I've got my drive connected, I've got my equipment selected, I've got my field made active, Brandenburg here, I've got my products in, entered, I'm basically ready to plant. And now this demo drive did have a sprayer, did have a planter on it. Let's show you what this would look like in our i have a demo here so let's do this i'm going to tap to connect to my demo here so you can see what this will look like okay hopefully it doesn't take too long maybe maybe not let me show you real quick here 
And back to my home screen and back to the map screen, right? This is what it looked like here. Notice you have these green panels on the left-hand side. That's a really good indicator that you are connected because when I unplug my drive here, which is probably what I need to do to get my um, other demos, I'm no longer connected to the current drive. I've switched over. Now I'm on my demo. So this is a simulation here that you can see. Like I said, I'm not in the field. But if you made your field active, you got your hybrid and you started to plant, then you would start to see your map, your population, your counters, all of those other things that are um, in indicating that you're mapping. Okay. One last thing I want to check within here is your field boundary detection. So your field boundary detection is basically where as field view is concerned, we have boundaries in our account. So Brandenburg has a boundary mapped around the outside of the field. You can do that manually in climate.com. You can import those shape files if you have RTK. Um, or if you go to plant, it will generate rough boundaries around your data if you do not have that field already listed with boundaries in the account. But let's say you have all of your fields mapped. And when you drive up to the field and you get ready to plant, if you have it set correctly or to the specifications that you like, it will automatically know, hey, this is a field here based off of the GPS indicators in this boundary and what's set up in my account. Do I want to make it active? So you can do that manually where it won't prompt you at all. You can do that where it will prompt you or you can do it automatically. I think I need to get disconnected from the drive here in order to do my field boundary detection. So let me go ahead and do that real quick. Devices, I'm gonna disconnect from my drive here. Back to my map screen. Okay, so do you notice on the left-hand side of the screen that those green panels are gone? That's because I'm disconnected. So if you don't have your green panels, you're not connected. Um, but I am going to, you see this arrow that I'm tapping, it will collapse and open back up. If I go to map options, it's going to give me some map options here. You have a few different things. Whatever's toggled in white is what's selected. So you have your boundaries, pins, regions, prompt hybrid and on-field change, which I do like to leave to enable. And then your field boundary detection. You have three options like I was discussing. Prompt. When you pull up to the field, it will automatically give you a, a pop-up that says, hey, would you like to make this field active? Auto will automatically switch when you pull up and disabled will leave it entirely up to you. So if you forget to change, if it's disabled, it's not gonna change it for you and it's not gonna remind you. Really great for when you're doing plots. If you've got someone in the cab who is not, um, not as good at looking at the iPad and checking and making sure they remember to set active, you probably wanna do prompt or auto. Auto gets a little bit tricky if you have fields that butt up against each other because when you go to turn around, it's going to be switching you. We've gotten a little bit better about that um, and it really does depend on how crisp and clean your boundaries are, but that's a good one for, not to throw dad or grandpa under the, under the bus here, but if you've got someone, like I said, who's not really up with uh, checking the iPad all the time, you can leave it on auto um, for the most part, but I would say 90% of the growers that I work with do prompt. Um, so it at least reminds them that, hey, you, you've switched fields. Okay. I wanna show you just a couple other things. Um, so I'm gonna go back here one more time just so we can visualize here and I'm gonna connect to my field view drive. I'm gonna go back to my home screen. So let's say that you want to just double, either double, triple, make sure everything's good to go, or maybe you see your tractor icon on the map screen, but it's not painting for some reason. So let's just say this was driving through this field and there was no map behind it. And you're like, well, what's going on? I don't, I don't get it. We do have a diagnostics port in the drive. So I went back to the home screen and where you can check that is if you go back to settings, we have a lot of great stuff in the settings button here and you go to devices, if you tap edit on this uh, drive that's connected down at the bottom, you're gonna see you have offload status, diagnostics, and shared swap. So offload status is really just has the data come off of the drive to the iPad, but diagnostics, if you toggle over there, you're gonna see 
well, hopefully you will see, green dots. That's what you want. You want green dots. Bus one is what's giving me my rate. So if I see myself as the tractor icon and no map and both bus one and bus two are grayed out, I probably got some, something going on where I'm not getting the signals from the actual planter. It could be a compatibility thing, could be a troubleshooting thing. Um, I can also see my GPS hertz. We want them to be set to five hertz, particularly if you have precision planting monitors, which is not the drive. Make sure that the actual GPS um, from either the nav controller or whatever's going on is set to five hertz. But that's what we read and what yield analysis reads, as well as uh, engine and population information. But what you want to see here is green dots. That means you're good. And if you don't, call support. That is your quick and dirty on getting connected with the drive. In the settings, there's a couple other things here, right? We were talking about adding hybrids. You can go um, and pre-add your list like we talked about, get them all added here. And I highly recommend doing this. If you are the grower, get your list from your dealer. If you're the dealer, get your list to your grower. Um, support them in this. Hey, hey, let's add your hybrids. Let's add your applications. Whatever it is that you know that you want to put in your operation this year, go ahead and get it added in advance. That way we're not fat fingering stuff and typing around while we're out there and we just have a quick, uh, quick pick list of our products. Now, the last thing I wanna show you, cause analysis, we're not gonna get to that today. We're just getting pre-planned set up is this help icon, right? So we showed you where to check your version info, good information. Um, there's some demos that can take you over to the knowledge center, but this contact support is gonna be a great place to go if you have an issue you'd like to submit to support, maybe not an SOS that involves like immediately getting a phone call, but you have something going on where you would like them to reach out to you. You can submit a ticket if you have a data plan on your iPad. So you very simply put in your phone number there. You would select climate field view drive, not precision planting, and then you would describe your problem. Here's what I'm gonna, I'm gonna steer you away from. Don't send, doesn't work because that gives us no context for what's going on. What I would recommend, like what Sarah said is, you don't have to write an essay necessarily, but um, you could put something like, I'm not getting a map behind my tractor, or I keep, you know, I reconnect my Bluetooth, it keeps dropping or something's reset. I just, I need somebody to reach out to me. I've tried disconnecting and reconnecting. A couple bullet points will go a long way, but what's really nice about submitting this ticket is that it will, if you look below submit ticket, it says field files from Brandenburg to Calb Asgro will be attached. So what that means is when you send this ticket with your phone number and your information, Support's gonna get field files that they can look at and hopefully glean some information off of, which is really good. You do have the 888 number up above, um, so that's the phone number you can call. And then down below, this is something I wish I would have had when I was in support, but you have a share your screen with Climate Support. They actually have a software now where they can um, view your screen and help you do the click. So if you've got someone really nervous with the iPad, let them know that we do have the ability to do this today um, and provide a really excellent level of support, which I know is very crucial. If you just need somebody to show you around and show you the clicks, that they'll be able to see what you're doing and help you out that way. So I highly, highly recommend. I mean, I don't know how many 888 numbers you can call and really get that experience and they don't charge you. So. Um, 10 out of 10 for our support. I know not everything gets resolved immediately, but we do a darn good job. I'm a little bit biased. I came from support, but I think they closed like 97% of tickets on the first call um, last season. So don't, don't hesitate to reach out there. But Mindy, did I miss anything or does anybody have any questions? Hey, Megan, thank you for that great call out on support. If you didn't say it, I was going to, that our support team is uh, second to none. Even even though Megan left support and went up into the field, uh, they still are top notch, um, including um, our climate activation managers, both Sarah and Megan. Um, the only question I have right now, Megan, is what what's the process for replants? If folks uh, get out in the field and um, they're checking emergence, which they can do, by the way, with our scouting tools and mark uh, where they may have some emergence issues, how how should folks handle replant when they're mapping with field view? 
Yeah. So if nothing has changed, really what happens is, so let's say you go out and plant your field. So you plant it the first time and your replant situation happens and you have a few spots that you need to go back in and redo. If you plant the first time and outside of 14 days, go back in to plant again in those spots, it will automatically register it as a replant scenario and it will break it out in reporting for you under your summaries. I don't know if this one's going to show it, but it will show you a replant section um, within the reporting and break that out for you. Is really pretty simply how it is. If you need to plant within that 14 day window that our system is designed for the replant, I would say give support a call we might need to clear a couple cover map coverage maps to uh to let you do that or you can rename your hybrid and as a custom and put replant in the name i like the first way better just because the system automatically will recognize it outside of that 14 days and break it out for you um but those are the two ways that i've heard of growers addressing replant have you heard of anything else um absolutely we prefer that they if the if the planting window is outside of 14 days uh, from the initial planting date, then our system will recognize it as replanting. And that's what you want to do. Um, I will post in the chat, we do have an article on Knowledge Center about replant that handles replant specifically. But if, if at all um, possible, we do, um, we do realize there are instances when you might have to enter our custom hybrid, but we do want to stay away from those um, because it's, it's going to throw off your data. Um, at the end. So that is, uh, you, you nailed it, uh, Megan, um, on the replant. Um, if we don't have any other questions, Megan, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass the ball to Sarah. She is going to bring up the um, QR codes again on those resources. And um, we will, you know, just finish out today um, with some concluding thoughts. So, um, Megan, well, uh, Sarah is bringing up the screen, I'll let you kind of have some final thoughts on anything that, you know, your final thoughts on getting folks to have a successful planting season. We've covered a lot today. Uh, so give us your final thoughts and then Sarah, I'll turn it to you. Yeah, my final thoughts, I, I just can't stress enough that um, really it's okay to click buttons. I, you're not going to break anything. Nothing's going to explode. And for the most part, even if you accidentally delete something, you know, try not to, we can probably get it back. I would rather you do more clicks and really cruise around the iPad feeling good and not worried about if you're going to delete anything than do less clicks and be scared to touch it because it's pretty foolproof for the most part. And like we've said a million times, and we'll say again, call your support team. We can probably fix anything crazy that happened. So. That's just my final thought there. Excellent. Sarah, any final parting words from you? Yeah, no, I just encourage everybody to reach out if you want help, you know, if you're not quite comfortable getting stuff set up, reach out to us. We're more than happy to come out to your farm and help you get set up. Uh, we just really wanna make sure you capture good quality data so that way it'll be a seamless process at harvest for you to analyze um, and really, see what's going on in your fields this year. Uh, and with that, um, if there's no more questions, I wanna just say, I hope everybody has a very safe spring and mother nature is kind to us. That is uh, some great wisdom there, Sarah. We um, had some warm weather and then mother nature has turned a little chilly on us um, here in the Midwest. So um, we just need to be a little bit patient, right? Uh, for just a little bit longer and then spring will for sure be here. Um, but ultimately, we do want to make sure that you all return to your families safely um, each day at the end of planting and, and um, to see the, the harvest for each crop. So um, we know that you're mindful. Make sure that you're watching out, and I know you will. Uh, for those that aren't familiar or don't understand the uh, impact of farm equipment, but we do hope that you have a very safe planting season um, and that it is um, one of the uh, most successful as well. If you do want to join us for other webinars, you can always check for those on our events page. We do have our recordings on our, our YouTube channel, so check there. And then also, if you need support, our support line or your local climate activation manager. Thank you again for joining us here on another great webinar. We 
hope to see you soon.